Welcome back folks, I am Brandon Schaefer and this is the fourth and final video in the drawing workshop. Uh, really hope you've enjoyed the series so far. So in the last three videos, we're just learning how to construct a drawing and kind of methods for how to begin a drawing and, and how to make it realistic, make it accurate. And today we're gonna to be bringing all of it together, all these components together to create a final sketch, a final drawing and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you really enjoy this drawing. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. Let's not waste any time. All right, so starting out with this drawing, um, for this basic drawing, <laughs> this little sketch here, I'm using basically two pencils uh, for the graphite and also the white pastel pencil. So something I recommend you try, encourage you to try is in the very beginning, when you're just learning to draw like this at the very beginning, only try to stick to doing a drawing like this a few times. Stick to only one or two pencils. Uh, the reason for that is because you really get to understand the limit of those pencils. You really, you won't be confused by having too many pencils. Um, I would say three or four at the most, but even at this stage when you're just starting out, I would recommend just one or two pencils and really just push their limit and uh, really get to know them well. So that's what I'm doing here. I think I'm using an HB and a 2B. Uh, so this beginning stage I think is an HB and you gotta remember, I'm not gonna go very, very dark in this uh, drawing here. Um, it's just not my, personally what I like to do. Uh, sometimes I do, but also for beginners I think, uh, it's good to practice this. It's good to not push your values too dark in the beginning. Uh, a lot of trouble beginners have with the values is uh, sometimes they don't push their values enough. They keep everything too light. And I understand that's a challenge. But at this point, I think just when you're starting out, it's very easy to get carried away and put, push things too dark. And then it's very difficult to correct it. So I would start out basically like what I'm showing here. Uh, once we get into the values, you'll see that I start out very lightly and uh, it's just something to try, just experiment with. But anyway, starting out with the sketch, you can see I'm mostly using straight lines. I'm kind of just going in for it. Uh, I'm separating the face from the beard. So I'm kind of drawing those as two separate things as well as the hair. So this, this kind of sketch, uh, I'm kind of seeing it as three parts. There's like hair, the face and then the beard and also the body. So maybe three parts or four parts, excuse me. Um, so sometimes it's good to separate the elements like that. And uh, like I said, I'm using mostly straight lines here. I'm kind of just going intuitively, but really almost every line I'm doing is just straight line, not doing too many curves unless I feel very confident. But you gotta remember, I've been drawing for years and years. So take your time in this stage of the drawing, really take your time, get things accurate, focus on the proportions and everything. Don't worry about it being perfect. Uh, you know, usually when you draw something the first time, it's not gonna be perfect. Nothing's perfect anyway, so don't waste your time with it. Just try to get it as close as you possibly can, do your best, and uh, just try to finish the drawing. Also, I'll explain real quickly why I'm using a painting as a reference. So this uh, painter, John Singer Sargent, is one of my favorite painters, really inspiring. He did a lot of great drawings as well. And I like drawing from painting sometimes and studying master paintings because they've already simplified their values in the painting most of the time. So you're gonna get strong value simplification right away from your reference. And also they simplify the drawing, they simplify the shapes. And it's good to study other artists and master artists to learn, uh, you know, to try to see how they simplified their values, how they kind of brought everything together, made it more simplified. Uh, so what we'll see in this drawing is like all the dark areas are very simplified actually. You know, only one to two values. So I'm still blocking in here. This is the blocking in phase uh, as I stated earlier. So just working with straight lines, just blocking in. And, and take note, I, I really waited to, you know, I haven't even drawn in any of the features yet. I'm just now starting 
with the nose area and the eye sockets and things. So I made sure I got the head and the outer proportions uh, as correct as possible before I started focusing on like smaller little details like the eyebrows and the nose and the mouth. You know, I really waited until I got the overall structure down. You know, the whole head, the beard, the hair. When I felt I'm happy with it, then only then I moved into the face and those kind of planes on the face, uh, the nose plane, you know, the bridge of the nose, the eyebrows, and now I'm sketching in the eyes here. So always try to start large shapes first, move to medium shapes, and then to smaller shapes. Uh, because, you know, if you start off with all these small shapes and you're putting them in certain places, you know, putting all this detail in, you know, if I start off with the eyes and I'm putting in all this detail and I need to move, if I need to make things larger or put it in a different place, it's going to be way more difficult to move it uh, rather than if it's just one or two lines, I can easily move those, you know, when I'm drawing a large shape. Uh, so just something to keep in mind as you're drawing this. I also encourage you to find your own painting. Find something that inspires you. And you don't have to follow along with me and do this drawing. This is just an example. This is just a demo of how I would go about it, how I would start it, and just kind of my method. But apply this kind of method and this process to your own reference, to your own example. See what you can come up with. So now that I got it kind of blocked in, I'm going to start filling in areas of darkness with just one overall value. And I'm using the HB still, I'm going very light here, and I'm going to uh, skip over this part just for t sake of time. But you can see I filled in all the areas of darkness, the areas of shadow. I've separated light from shadow. That's really my intention here, separating light from shadow. And I just did it with one overall value. And now I'm going into the background, and I only want to darken the left side uh, of him, of the background. And I'm going to skip over that as well, just for the sake of time. So now we separated light from shadow, or what is going to be light, or what's going to be shadow in this, in this drawing, in this sketch. And now I'm moving into the 2B pencil. So I'm getting a little bit darker here, not pushing hard at all, pushing very lightly. And uh, I'm going over, I'm kind of darkening areas. I'm looking at the painting now, and I'm looking at the areas that are really, really dark, really black. And I'm, I'm going over, uh, I'm filling in those, I'm shading in those. So I did the, his suit first, and then I started moving up the face. I went into the beard a little bit, and now I'm going up into the hair and the side of the face. And you can see I'm only kind of shading in the core shadow of his face. I'm not shading in the right side of his hair. Uh, that's kind of reflected light. Uh, so we're going to have that, that'll be a little bit lighter than that core shadow, that darker shadow that I'm shading right now. You know, the same thing I did in the previous video when I was shading the sphere, I kind of had that core shadow right up against the edge of the of, edge of light and up, up against the mid-tones. Uh, so we want to make sure we leave that reflected light on the, on the edge there. But you'll notice I'm going to really take my time here with the rest of this, uh, with the rest of the shading, the rest of... Uh, the whole process of this drawing. I'm going to be jumping around the drawing. I, the way that I kind of do things is very intuitively. Um, there is structure to it overall, to these different stages that it goes through. You can see that I'm not really blocking in anything anymore. I'm not really drawing lines anymore. I'm focusing on masses of value, so dark and light shapes. That's what I'm focusing on, and I'm, I'm redrawing edges of things, you know, that his nose and his nostril, if it needs to be fixed or corrected, I'm kind of redrawing it compared to the block in phase. But notice everything I'm doing here, I'm not really drawing lines anymore. I'm drawing shapes, dark shapes. And I'm just making my way around the face, around the head. This is the focal point, is his face. So I kind of want the most contrast to be around the face area because that's where I want the viewer to look. You know, I know that his suit is very, very dark, but I may not want to make his suit the darkest thing in the drawing because I don't really want to focus attention down there. Um, I want the eye to look at his face. I want the eye 
our eyes to look at his eyes and his nose and his mouth, his face. So that's going to be my main focus. Uh, for, the, for the main portion of the drawing, that's going to be my main focus. So I'm noticing the way that I shade and the way that I kind of do things. You can see that I'm kind of going only one direction. I'm just going up and down. I'm making these hatching, kind of hatching marks up and down. And if, you, if you've ever seen any of my pen and ink drawings, this is something I like to do. I like to just do lines vertically. Um, it's just comfortable for me. I like the effect. I think it looks nice. I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's a personal preference. You don't have to shade this way. You can go diagonally, you can do cross hatching, you can scribble, you can smudge and smear. It's endless, right? It's, it's endless. Everybody's gonna shade differently. Everyone's drawing is gonna look different. Uh, so just do whatever feels intuitive to you, whatever feels right to you. Uh, I encourage you to go with that. And if you're unsure, then just try a bunch of different stuff. So now we're getting into a little bit more details here. I, I feel happy with everything at this point. So now I feel more confident to go into the, the facial features, kind of solidify the eyes a little bit more. I'm being careful to leave uh, some little dots in the middle of his eyes for highlights. So that's something I'm trying to be aware of, be careful of. I'm looking at my reference, making sure I'm kind of matching it as closely as I can. Not worrying about perfection here. We're not trying to make it look photorealistic or super realistic. And uh, that's one reason why I chose to draw from a painting because I didn't want to get caught up in, in you know, I didn't want people to think like, oh, it has to look exactly like a photo. It has to look exactly realistic, you know. That's not really what we're going for. We're going, we're trying to create a drawing. That's the idea here. We're trying to create a piece of art. We're trying to create a sketch or a drawing. However far you want to take this, however dark you want to shade and make it, you can take it as far as you want. You know, it's really open-ended. Art is really open-ended. I don't want to sit here and tell you that you can't do this or you can't do that. It's not about having rules. It's really, to me, art is like lack of rules, you know? There's guidelines to follow, there's things to make it look realistic and to, you know, you want to have that core shadow in there along his cheek and down his beard, up his hair. That's going to give it a little more realistic effect, right? Having those two separated values of shadow and reflected light. You know, having that core shadow and then the reflected light. So that's something important to follow, but uh, however you do it is up to you. You know, however you intend to shade it, uh, how much reflected light you want there to be. This is all decisions you can make, and uh, it's really endless. It's limitless. So we can see it's really starting to come to life now. You know, I got the features in there a little bit more. I, I made my way down to the mouth and to the lip, and now I'm just making my way into the background. I'm going to darken that a little bit more just to pop his face out just a little bit more. Uh, and also separate it from the beard just a tiny bit. And I feel at this stage, uh, it's best to try to, at some point, once you get enough darkness down on the drawing, you feel good about it, it's good to move to the white pastel. And what this is going to do is uh, really start to bring things to life. And this will kind of help me understand, okay, what more does the sketch need? What more shading does it need uh, when I move back to the, the graphite pencil, um, if it needs anything at all? So sometimes you don't want to like shade too much, too long, because uh, you might overdo it. So I try to just take things slowly Kind of put a little bit of everything down there. Be careful with this white, with these highlights and this white pencil. Uh, it's very easy to overdo it. And I think I probably overdid a little bit here on the nose and stuff. Uh, but I kind of tone it down. I make sure I tone it down. But it, you really want to limit the highlights. Only, only draw and shade in 
what the brightest, brightest things are on your reference. So sometimes a good idea is to squint at your reference photo. Uh, by squinting at it, squinting your eyes, it'll separate the light and shadow. It'll really uh, simplify the values. And that's kind of what you want your drawing to look like. When you squint at your reference, you want your drawing to have that kind of simplified look. So try to pay attention to what's the lightest thing, what's the darkest thing, and you want those to be the lightest and darkest as well in your drawing, uh, at least when it comes to your focal point. So just continuing here, putting some highlights on the face. Feel pretty good about that. And now I'm going to move to the background. So this is going to help even separate him even more from the paper and from the background. It's going to give it a little more of a 3D look. And I think I'm going to speed it up here as well, just for the sake of time. You know, it's very simple, you know, you're just shading the background. It's nothing, uh, you know, not doing surgery or anything, right? We're just putting some tone on the paper, no big deal. So now I'm going to go back to the graphite and I'm going to, now that I have some highlights and things on there, I can kind of figure out like, all right, what more does this need? So I can start getting a little more subtle now. We're moving into kind of the final stage of the drawing here. And this is where you want to put your darkest darks in, uh, really fix anything that needs to be fixed. I'm going to start sharpening some lines. So you're seeing here, uh, sharpening the cheekbone, the outline of the cheek. So I'm really solidifying some of the edges here, really uh, sharpening them a bit instead of having them be so soft. And that's just going to bring attention to certain areas. So that's what I'm looking to do is just bring attention to a few small areas. And like I said, I'm just, we're tweaking tiny little things here. But also, you don't want to overdo it as well. Sometimes you want to keep it simple, but uh, sometimes there's some necessary things, especially with your focal point. Uh, sometimes you, you want to do, you want to put what's necessary. So I'm just working on the mustache here and the beard, trying to solidify that a little bit more. And this is, this is really the home stretch of the drawing. You know, and it, it's, it, sometimes this, this home stretch is, is the most challenging part of a drawing, figuring out what more does it need. Uh, sometime a little, sometimes a little more darkening can help. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just going over some areas, adding some little stray hairs, you know, giving it just a little more life here and there. Sharpening some edges. I think I'm gonna sharpen the edge here. Yep, there we go. So solidifying that edge just a little bit more, separating them from the background. You know, I like the left side being more mysterious as it fades into the background, his face, his beard, and his body kind of fades into the background. I like that kind of mysterious feeling uh, that it has. So I'm just going to darken that background a little bit more and blend it into his, his suit and everything. And I like the right side being more light really giving definition to the edge, everything. Gives a lot of contrast. So I kind of ex exaggerated the reference photo a little bit. And that's, that's something good to do too as well. Sometimes you can exaggerate, you can change things, whatever you feel is necessary, whatever you feel uh, that you like. I'm darkening up the hair just a bit more. You know, I, I really could stop here if I wanted to. You know, this is good enough for me. This is a cool little sketch. You know, give me some drawing practice. Looks really nice. Um, you know, it, it's it's up to you where you want to stop, where how far you want to keep going. I could keep fiddling th with this for many hours. I could get a darker pencil. I could take like a 4B or even a 6B, and I could really, really push the values here if I wanted to. And that's something maybe you want to. Maybe you want to push the values even more, and that's uh, quite all right. I, I even encourage you to try to do that. 
just to see what kind of effects and what kind of things you like to do. You know, don't just follow me for the sake of following me. You know, I really encourage you to be your own artist and uh, see what you like to do. So I erased a little bit there and I'm putting in some white mark here. I noticed that on the painting, there's like a little bit of highlights on this in the shadow side. There's like a little bit of highlights. So I want to put those in there because it's just a little bits of detail that can really uh, give it just a little bit more life. See those little highlights there. Um, you know, I don't want them to be too distracting, but just having a little bit of light back there makes it really nice, a little bit more realistic. Makes your eye jump around the drawing a little bit more. Just gives the viewer more to look at, you know. So I think that's pretty cool. Just solidifying the hairline there a little bit more and a little bit of his cheeks there, popping that out and his bottom lip. Like I said, this white pencil, it's really easy to overdo, so definitely be careful. Definitely be careful when you're doing this white pencil. But I, I hope you, I hope this has opened your eyes a little bit and uh, kind of shown you what you can do and how the, you know, how art is kind of limitless. Drawing is, is whatever you want it to be. You don't have to shade with very dark values if you don't want to. You can try charcoal if you want to go really dark. You can try some dark graphite pencils if you want to get really dark. Uh, it's really up to you. There's no like right or wrong here. Uh, it's really your personal preference. And for me, I like lighter values like this. I think it's just, it's, I like the subtlety. I like the challenge of it. And uh, you can still create stuff and look realistic that looks realistic even if you don't make super dark values. Um, I think it's just a cool effect. And uh, yeah, so that's the finished drawing there, folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope your drawings turn out well. And uh, thank you for watching this whole workshop. Take care of yourself. Peace.